to welcome uh, Scott Fairburn, so, which says the raise on a small mixed family farm in the eastern Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, Saskatoon, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the philosophy to think and act like a farmer uh, comes naturally. Uh, Scott's primarily responsibility as a global uh, seeding product specialist for Case IH uh, is to communicate the voice of the customers from commercial marketing team around the world to the research and development team in Saskatoon. Prior to his current role, he spent time as a design engineer, engineering team lead, and value analyst. Uh, which rounds about 15 years of experience with uh, CNH, Industrial, and uh, Case IH brand. So I'll hand over to Scott. All right, welcome everybody. I realize this is the uh, last presentation on the last day of the show. So uh, you guys are the diehards here. Um, With that, I will tell you a little bit about myself. So yeah, my name is Scott Fairburn. Uh, I'm the Global Seeding Product Specialist for Case IH. I grew up on a small uh, farm, mixed farm, near Priestville, Saskatchewan, which for those that you don't know where that is, it's halfway between York and Hudson Bay. Um, I grew up there. I started out my career as a design engineer at Morris Industries, one of our competitors now. Uh, worked there for about five years in Yorkton uh, before getting married and moved, moved to Saskatoon. I worked for a couple of different egg companies before settling at uh, Case IH, which is at the old New Holland plant, or the old FlexiCoil plant um, at the north end of Saskatoon, where we build a mix of Case, New Holland, and FlexiCoil products there. What do I do? So my role as a global seeding product specialist is I represent the voice of the customer uh, and take it back to product development or the engineers. So my job is to really translate what you, what you guys need um, so that they can understand it and deliver a, a product to meet your needs. So why am I here today? Um, we were asked to share how companies take feedback from customers and bring how it helps us bring products to the market. And this is something we're quite proud of at Case IH. So at Case IH, we like to say that we think and act like a farmer. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody in our product development team is a farmer. I don't currently farm. I grew up in the farm, but I don't currently farm. I try to help out my in-laws. They farm um, in western Saskatchewan near Rosetown. I try to help them when they're seeding and, and combining spring and fall if I can. Um, but I'm not an active farmer. We have a few people in our office that are, uh, but definitely not everybody can do that with a full-time job and, and farm. But we want to you know, definitely get the feedback from the farmers um, and that's, that's what I want to go through today. So, in terms of the tools that we use to gather this information, uh, we have a number of different ways. Um, first one being focus groups, so we do bring in uh, customers or go out to dealerships, gather customers together uh, to get the regional input from their special needs maybe in that specific area. Again, um, my position is global. So, I mean, Western Canada is a, a big part of our business, but we are a worldwide company, so we do travel um, you know, to Australia, uh, the APAC region, uh, and South America as well. We also sometimes bring customers in for design reviews. Uh, so we'll bring them into our Saskatoon office, uh, into the R&D office or shop, and have them review our designs or our solutions, proposed solutions, to get their feedback. So we're starting to do more and more of that, um, and it's been very successful so far. 
We do customer clinics. Um, a lot of times we'll combine that with a, a training session um, where we're doing end user clinics to train on specific products, but we'll also um, gather input at the same time. So we may have you know, some questionnaires or whatever to, to fill out to gather some of that feedback. Another one is surveys, and I know everybody hates surveys. I, I hate when I, when I get a phone call and I'm in the middle of supper and somebody wants to do a survey. Um, our company, we do surveys as well. So I guess I'd, I'd, I'd like to say, if you get a call from a Case IH uh, representative for a survey, please, please do so and take the time. We'll definitely try not to be calling, uh, you know, after uh, in the evenings and, and whatnot. But the reason we do surveys and the reason why everybody does is to get more uh, statistical information from the feedback. We typically, you have to have a, a big population and, and the easiest way to do that is to do a survey. So that's why they're done all the time. And um, we, we're guilty of doing them as well. We also talk to our local dealers. So um, we have regular touch points where we um, have meetings with our dealers. So they can be uh, dealer advisory boards, which is specific groups of dealers or regular dealer meetings that we do more on an annual basis. But we have those touch points where we, we get the feedback from the dealer, basically translating from, from the customer's point of view. And the last but not least is the one I kind of want to touch on more here today, is uh, we use a process called Customer Driven Product Definition. So, or CDPD, we love our acronyms. Um, but really, it's a, it's a continuous process. It definitely has a lot of work at the front end of the process, and I'll, I'll get a little more into detail on that. Um, but it is a process we, where we really document the customer needs um, and all the pain points that they have. Each of these points uh, definitely is, uh, serves its own purpose, and we use them uh, as required. So purposeful solutions, um, designed, engineered, and built by farmers, Case IH offers purposeful solutions that make activities more productive, efficient, and profitable. So let's hone in on those words a little. It comes down to three core things, design, technology, and performance. And I apologize, my slide looks a little garbled. Um, it was looking fine yesterday. <laughs> uh, so it means that our products need to be simple and easy to use. I was uh, listening to the last uh, presentation on variable rate, and a lot of the comments were about, you know, make it simple to use, or a lot of customers are scared of getting into using variable rate because they're scared of the te technology, scared of how to run it, scared of problems arise during seeding, and they don't want that. So keeping it simple is very important. Which leads into how we purposefully bring technology into our machinery and how it functions on your operation. It can be simply ensuring your fleets are well connected um, and so that you can you know, monitor that uh, all of your machines, um, whether it's at your home base or in your truck. And it's really about automating the features as well as a, as a step to full autonomy in the, in the future. And we'll talk about that. Those automation features are things like Harvest Command, which I'll also touch on a little later. So we're really about uh, providing technology with a, with a purpose, not just technology for technology's sake. One thing we all know, and we kind of always relate, technology, you get electronics and software. And a lot of reliability problems on a lot of the products nowadays are because of that. Uh, it seems like we have more problems with um, that side of things than the mechanical side. And that's, you know, all, all companies have to address that. And then there's performance. You may think performance just means horsepower, um, but it's more than that. It's, it's your performance, it's the performance of your operation. 
and we're trying to keep everything at, at the peak performance. We also consider how uh, your farm impacts your agronomic uh, practices as well, and uh, how much it affects your downtime. And we, we look to solve those common problems uh, to make sure you're as efficient as, as you can be. So, did everybody see our, our case quad track at the booth? Can anybody tell me what model this is? And I know it says it. Yeah, the 715. So currently the most powerful tractor on the market. And I guess what do you think we heard about when we developed this tractor? Uh, more common was definitely a common, a common thing, but it's power with a purpose. And we saw a lot of themes arising, especially here in Western Canada. So we all know labor shortages are continuing to grow. Um, and how do you deal with that? Be more productive with less people, which means more power. We have a short operating window, both spring and fall. Our season in Western Canada and even all over North America is a very, very short growing season. We have one shot at it, one crop typically, and time is money. So um, everything we can do to increase our productivity is, is an advantage. So what did we hear? We gathered feedback. We went to a lot of customers. We did the CDPD um, to gather that information and came away with some of the key points. They wanted to pull bigger implements. It seems like it's a common trend that we continue to get bigger and bigger. When I started designing back in the mid-90s, everybody thought, yeah, tractors tapping out, they're topping out at 500 horsepower, that's got to be the end of it. Uh, 60 feet, that's got to be the end of it. How much bigger can our equipment get? It's continued to grow. Farmers need to do more with less, uh, less people. Um, they don't want the fleets in some cases, so they need big, bigger implements. They want to pull it faster. So we do have some products that you can go faster, like disc drills. But if you're talking hoe drills, certain speeds due to uh, you know, being accurate and, and, and doing everything agronomically that you want to do, um, or keep the same speed going up hills. Uh, so more power to do, to do that, both going faster and keeping the same speed. And in doing so, you get more done with each pass. So that's really what the, what the customers are wanting to do. So one of the key applications, obviously, is, is air seeding, which, again, my specialty is on the seeding side. Um, and customers wanted all three of those things. Pull bigger, bigger implements, maintain the speed or go faster, maintain the speed going up hills or go faster, and get more done with each pass. Those were the motivators for the quad track. So those needs translated into solutions. So in terms of hydraulic flow, bigger drills. So if you want bigger drills for more acres per hour, bigger drills typically have more hydraulic cylinders. Therefore, you need more hydraulic flow. In terms of getting more done with each pass, precision technology can do a lot for you. Reduced overlap, uh, end of row turns, uh, other automated features that reduce the operator fatigue so that you can maximize productivity on every pass. Operator comfort does, goes a long way, so improvements in the cab uh, were done. More comfortable seating um, with the cooling and heating features, more comfortable armrest, better ventilation, better sound system, everything to make the customer feel more comfortable, easier to use, means less fatigue and more productivity. Typically more power, more horsepower means more heat generation, 
so therefore more cooling was required. Field lighting also improved. Uh, a lot of customers want to, you know, productivity is very important. They're working around the clock, working in the night, better lighting, more lumens, improved uh, light placement, provided those benefits with, with the new 715. And throughout the process, we did have feedback loops. So we'd bring in customers to review what we did as a solution and make sure that it made sense and that it was fitting their, fill, filling their need. An example of that was definitely the question of tracks versus wheels. So that's a big thing. I mean, we're very proud of our, our quad track design. Uh, the response was very clear, keep the tracks. Um, you know, gives you less compaction and puts all the power to the ground very efficiently. As you can see from just one example, a lot of thought went into what uh, made up the, the Steiger 715. We purposefully worked to maintain durability and agronomic benefits and performance that customers wanted to keep based on the 620 quad track, which was very, very popular. Again, power with purpose. The final product was driven by our customers at various steps in the process. And as mentioned earlier, we have various tools to gather that feedback. But probably one of the most um, unique is our CDPD process. So the name says a lot, customer driven product definition. Um, we'd like to say it kicks off innovation, but really it's a continuous process. And it might be one of the first steps of the process, but it is continuous. And it's really all about gathering the insights from, from the customers. Basically what you guys are facing is problems. And I should clarify that this is a needs-based approach as opposed to the product-based or the solution. So what we're... What we're trying to focus on is really what you need so that we can provide a solution. And the conversation is really led by the farmer. Um, we really keep it, the conversation open because we want to hear at the top of your, basically at the top of your mind, what the most important problems you have or the, the biggest things that you like. Um, and that's what we, we, we look at. We, we bring in um, a cross-functional team. So we'll bring in, yes, we'll have engineers there. We'll have folks from manufacturing. We'll have folks from quality, from our precision technology group, the electronics and software side. We'll have sales folks there. We'll have marketing folks there. Um, now, typically, we'll have a mix of people. We try to limit who we bring to the farm to about three or four. For one reason is that it's overwhelming if you have 10 people show up and you have to talk to all of them and they bombard you with questions. So we usually keep it a small group, but it's a mix from various functions within our company. And really what that's to, the reason for that is to spread the information so that all basically departments from our company understand what the customer, what's important to the customer and they can take it back. Um, so we look, when we go to the farm, we, we look at a number of different things. What's going well? So we wanna know what works good for you. In some cases, we, we do talk to competitive owner customers. So you may not have our product, we'll still wanna talk to you because we want to know what you like maybe about a competitor. Um, if you're our own customers, we, we want to reinforce what we, what we do well so that we don't take that away, we don't remove that. On the flip side, in terms of what's going well, it's also what's going bad or not well. We want to know what your pain points are. Um, and that's usually you know, the biggest things we want to resolve and address. But again, we keep reinforcing the things that you like. We want to make sure we keep doing those. And we listen to what they, what they say, obviously, or what you say. But really, we have to get to the bottom 
of it in terms of why you want that or why it's a problem. Um, it, say, it may seem like very much common sense to you uh, as a customer. You've been doing this for years. Everybody, your neighbors do it. You think it's common sense that everybody should know that. The, the problem or the reality of the situation is that over North America, there's a lot of different regional practices and things that, those, that the farmers do in that area that have been doing it for years. And that's what we, as you know, a team, let's say out of Saskatoon, don't know what everybody does in their little regional area. Um, so we have to ask the question why. And I always preface whenever I'm involved in these interviews that you're gonna get sick of me asking why because you might think it's very common sense and as we're dumb for not knowing that. Um, but it, in essence, what we're trying to do is make sure that we capture that information and take it back. We also emphasize we're not there to sell them anything. Even though I said that we have you know, sales and marketing folk there sometimes, um, we try to keep their, their mouths closed in terms of we're not there to sell. We're there to, to pull out the information. So what's unique about this process? We do the customer or the CDPD visits at the customer's farm. We do it on your own turf. And the reason for that is you're way more comfortable and you, you know, then you'll be more open with the conversation and we want to make you feel comfortable because we want to pull, pull all the information that we can get. Um, and we typically want to stand around the equipment as well. So it's not just you and your house necessarily. We want to be out in the shop or in your Quonset or wherever you have your equipment stored and we'll walk around it as well so that it can jog your memory. Um, not everything you can remember because we won't be doing it. If we were doing this for seeding product, we wouldn't be doing it at the time of seeding because you don't have time. And it seems like summer, fall is always, it's a, it all blends together and it's a busy time on the farm. So we typically do this out of season uh, for you so that you do have time to do this and so you know, walking around the equipment helps jog your memory. What did I have problems with? Maybe when you see the gauge wheels on a, on a disc drill or whatever, you'll say, oh yeah, right, it was, it was hard to adjust the depth in this one spot. It's easier for you to remember that if you're walking around it. It typically takes a couple hours. It can be, it can be more than that. It all depends on how talkative the, the customer is. Um, what we do, and so a lot of information. In two hours, that's a lot of talking. And we, we used to try to write things down. Now we record everything, uh, the audio, and we have software that can transcribe that recording, put it into words, and we can take it back so we don't have to focus on trying to write things down and remember everything that was said. It's all recorded, assuming that the customer is okay with that. And we take it back and the software allows us to transcribe it, like I said, and then we can compile all the information, um, summarize the points. A lot of times, you know, you can talk for a minute or two and say a lot of things about one point. And so we have to summarize that into, it might be multiple paragraphs of text. And we'll put that down to, to one one point. The beauty of the software is the design engineers, when they see what we've compiled in that, that bullet point, they can go back easily to the transcript and hear from the horse's mouth what you said about that problem or the, the thing that you liked. They can hear all of it and it's very, very easy. So we're, we're, we're really excited about this software to help improve and do this more often because it used to be a lot of work um, to, to try to do all the visits and pull all the information, a lot of manual work, and now that software has made our life a little bit easier. So why do we do it? We're trying to get to the core of the operation in terms of what's important. Um, and we really, we do have a lot of questions prepared, 
but again, it's a very open-ended conversation and visit. We want basically the customer to speak his mind, his or her mind. To do that, I mean, like I said, we will have questions prepared to make sure that we're covering off all the points in terms of uh, reminding them maybe a little bit uh, to think about it. Um, but we do need to understand what their operation is like. And so that involves uh, what types of equipment do they use. Uh, sometimes it goes uh, you know, outside uh, in terms of what implements we even offer uh, in terms of what their practices are, and we need to understand that. We want to know what their productivity goals are, how many acres per hour that they're targeting, how many hours a day do they work? What do they prefer to get more productivity? Um, do, they provide, do they prefer wider drills or to go faster? What's their preference and why? We want to know about their agronomic goals. So what do they, how do they want to place their seed and fertilizer? How close to the seed row do they want to put their fertilizer? How deep do they want to put their fertilizer? What about packing? All those types of things, we will, we'll get into those types of questions and how they're achieving those today or maybe the shortfalls that they have today. We'll talk about transport. So we know a lot of our customers, the farms are getting larger. They're having to transport further distances. And in some cases, they have to cross bridges, uh, go over overpasses, whatnot, that are fixed dimensions. So we need to understand what they're dealing with so that we can provide solutions to, to fit that envelope when we're, when we're transporting. We'll also talk about precision technology in terms of what they're doing. I mean, yeah, everybody uses guidance today on their tractors, uh, but what about prescriptions? I mean, not the previous presentation, uh, it kind of surprised me that it was only 14% of customers that do variable rate um, back in 2022. Um, that's not that, that many, but we want to know if you're doing that or, or how about telematics? Are you using that technology? Are you, you know, using the cloud for data transfer? Are you using off-board farm management systems? Um, do you have a fleet? Do you have more than one, one implement that you're trying to track multiples at the same time and need to have fleet management? We also talk about the future. So, we want to know what the farming operation will look like, what they think it will look like in the next five years. Is it getting bigger? Are you transferring over to um, a son or a daughter potentially? Um, are you going to try different farming practices? Uh, are you going to grow different crops? What, I guess you know, we want to know what you're, what you're looking to do in the next uh, five years. Again, it's all about understanding the operation. So one thing that's been coming to the surface loud and clear is a shortage of labor. We know that you know, labor is a key point, especially in the peak times of seeding and harvest where you need typically more manpower. And solving those challenges is definitely a big priority for us at Case IH. So it's not just the availability of labor, it's having skilled labor. Um, retired farmers are the, the best skilled operators that you can get your hands on. I know my, my brother-in-law farms in uh, western Saskatchewan. He was growing his farm. He was renting land from his neighbors. Those neighbors were retiring. He was you know, hiring them in, in spring and fall. They were great. But now there, that was, he was doing that for the last 15 years. Now those neighbors are getting well up in age and they're unable to get into the tractor, into the combine, so they're, they're not available anymore. So he's you know, stuck with sometimes getting unskilled workers and that's, that's a big challenge. So with that labor shortage, of skilled labor shortage, definitely means more um, features, I guess, autonomous features that will help us 
compensate for the lack of skilled labor? I mean, it's always a question that we do ask, you know, how many customers would go the full autonomous route? We're not there yet um, in terms of, I think, being um, okay with that. Um, some, there's regulations as well that we have to deal with in terms of road transport. But even vehicles, uh, I haven't had the liberty yet of uh, going in a vehicle that's self-driving. I don't know if I would trust it. You, it's, it's more, you have to see demonstrations of that before you believe it. Um, but that's definitely a path in the future that we're headed because of the labor shortage. So all of these processes, all of these tools in terms of gathering the, the customer information, what has it done for us or how have we used it? So I will give you a few examples here. So this is a um, early riser 2160 planter. Um, when we developed the 2000 series planters, which there's probably not a, plant, a lot of planters here in Western Canada, but it's very big in the US where the corn belt is. And one of the first things that we heard about with planters is that the customers want to customize their planter for their specific application and what they're doing there, what their soil types are, all their variables, they want to customize that planter. Ideally, they want to customize it from the factory. I'll say it, planters are probably the most customized piece of equipment um, on the farm. We actually build them in Saskatoon so I can vouch for the manufacturing guys when they say, yeah, every, every planter is unique that's going down the production line. And there are, the customers are always searching for the aftermarket solution and it's a pain to do that because you can't combine that with when your initial purchase is, so it's always a hassle to do that. Um, and it preferred to be ordered right from the factory that way. So many times, you know, whether it's the gauge wheels, the narrow ones, or the spoked ones, or different residue managers, or closing discs, whatever it is, they want to order it from the, from the factory. And so the 2000 series planner was a big step in that direction to be fully customizable to, to give you whatever you wanted. Next point, which definitely isn't unique to planters, is durability. So every piece of equipment on your farm, you want it to be durable. And we know that planters, uh, again, short growing season, so uh, when it's time to plant, you plant, and if you have downtime in the planting time frame, it means money at the, end, at the end of the season, right? There's been tons of studies on corn because it's so big in the US that every day you uh, delay planting affects your emergence, affects your yield. So uh, very big impact to you uh, that way if, if it's not durable during operation. Probably the last insight for planters was visibility of what's going on on the planter from the tractor seat. So we wanted to make sure that we could see all of that information on a row by row basis, um, ideally on a single display. So that's what we delivered with the, the 2000 series planter. And it wasn't that we launched it and then forgot about it and not touch it for, for years. There were improvements done, different models were uh, really, or, um, uh, launched as well for smaller footprints or smaller widths. Uh, we added crop, uh, different crop types, uh, the ability to seed canola or, or plant canola, singulate it to reduce your seed costs. We know customers here in Manitoba, not so many in Saskatchewan, but there's been in Alberta as well, that use planters to singulate canola. One thing that our planter team, and I'll give them a little plug, um, that they do very well is they visit customers every year on a regular basis. And I know I talked about CDPD being a continuous process. They execute that very well and follow up with customers every year. Um, I mean, one, I guess one advantage of of, their, uh, pr of that product is that the Corn Belt is very focused so that they can hit a lot of customers on a regular basis.
So one that's a little more near and dear to my heart because it's on seeding product is uh, furrow command. So we released this, um, in fact, uh, to be in the field for this spring, and it's on our, on our disc drills. And what it was about was getting the right downforce on the drill, regardless of the condition. And when we talked to customers, the number one thing that they said with the drill, what's most important is seed placement. Obviously, if your drill's not putting seed in the ground in the right place, it's not working for you. So that was the number one thing. And to have good seed accuracy, part of the system that does that is your downforce. So automating that improves your, your uh, seed placement. How to deal with field variability. So before this feature, we had in-cab adjustable down pressure. So you could change the down pressure in, from the tract or seat, but you had to know what to do. And it was very, uh, you know, you had to use, you looked at the machines, saw how much your row units were bouncing maybe, and would adjust your down pressure accordingly. It was using judgment, constant looking at it. It was something you had to do and you had to have some skill to be able to do it correctly. This feature does it automatically. So whether you have low spots that are soft, hill tops that are drier and harder, this will adjust the down pressure, the hydraulic pressure, to make that down force on the gauge wheel constant to wherever you set it at. So it handles the field variability for you. And another issue or complaint that customers have is I don't like how much the parts for the wear and tear, the replacement parts cost me. I want to reduce that. This system does reduce the wear and tear because it eliminates having too much down pressure when you don't need it. All that does is creates more wear and tear. It even takes more horsepower, more fuel, affects the bottom line. A lot of customers always say, make it easier. I heard it for the, the variable rate uh, presentation as well. Make it easy. I don't want to have to read the operator's manual every spring before I start seeding or every fall when I'm using the combine. I don't want to have to read that. I want it to be easy and intuitive. So this system does make it very easy to use because you basically set it and forget it. And it performs still at a very high level to what a very highly skilled operator would do and be busy trying to keep it adjusted to be set correctly. I know whenever I've helped set up a new, or a customer that's bought a new disc drill, the first question is, what do we set the down pressure at? And we do have a, a bit of a procedure on how to figure that out. This does remove that procedure. It reduces you getting out of the tractor cab and going to check things. Um, it, makes, it makes you seed more in the day. And if you put that all together, it gives you peace of mind that the, the machine's been working as intended and working right for you. And it doesn't matter who's been operating it. Uh, this feature is available in all of our disc drills. This one's shown with the mounted tank, but it's also uh, available with our single shoot and double shoot models as well. So the next, next example is Harvest Command. Um, Harvest probably shines a big light on lack of skilled labor more than any time of the year. Um, it's typically go time in the fall. And um, our, our customers gave us the feedback to say that it's always hard to find hired help that can, one, operate the combine, but it's way harder to get them to actually set and adjust the combine and know what they're doing. We also noticed that even owners, operators that are skilled, sometimes wouldn't adjust their combine properly because it took too much time. And so they're leaving money on the table, money on the ground actually, um, by not doing that. And it's all about the time. 
So this feature was all about making that harvest experience much easier. How did we bring it to market? We identified those problems um, to re, you know, that we needed to resolve, which was replacing the skilled labor and make the adjustments to go quicker, to make it, take it less time. We knew it needed to be simple to use, and it's all about the, the customer's experience with it. Like I said, you don't want to have to read the owner's manual every, every fall. So we collected the feedback, and we knew that it needed to be automated in various field conditions, various crop types. Um, again, we're a worldwide company, so uh, there's all the different crops in all the different regions that it had to handle. It was tested over three years um, to you know, prove out the sensors and that it would work in all those conditions before we went to market. We also, you know, once we figured out what adjustments need to be improved upon in terms of making it simple, we brought in unskilled operators to make those adjustments to prove it. So we went through uh, iterations or loops um, in design to make sure that it was doing what we intended it to do. And it needed to show an ROI. Obviously, it all comes down to you got to make money at the end of the day. And we were finding that combines not using Harvest Command had lower yields and lower grain quality when sampled versus ones with Harvest Command. And again, it's not technology for technology's sake. It was to address the, the very important purpose of replacing skilled labor on the farm. So balancing some of the new thinking with innovation, with customer comfort in their existing situation, is something that we also take into account. So not everybody wants to jump on the new technology path. They're not an early adopter. They want to see what they're, you know, somebody that buys that equipment, proves it out first before they uh, make the leap. That's why we go through a lot of the design loops and rigorous testing to make sure that they are going to be comfortable, that it is easy to use um, before we go that far. You can see that you know, with products or features like furrow command, harvest command, that they're, they're really part of the autonomous roadmap in terms of having equipment run itself in the future to really address that labor shortage. So we're getting close to the end here. So I've talked a lot today about purposeful solutions. And these design, tech, and performance aspects are really meant to make your life easier. And that purpose extends to our dealers as well, to make sure that they provide quality service, re including remote diagnostics to you, to reduce your cost of ownership and downtime during the busiest times of the year. So hopefully today helped you a little bit understand how Case AH is built by farmers, not by me standing on the stage, but, but you. Thanks, everyone. Any, any questions? Go ahead. Yep. So the question is, did, did we get feedback on the 715 quad track and did we get any feedback that we need more, right? I don't typically work on the uh, tractors a lot. I was actually involved in some of the CDPD when uh, we were doing that, uh, of, of course. So yes, um, and like I said earlier, back in 95 when I started, you thought everything was at the max. It's never at the max. It'll keep growing. Um, there are needs for more. I mean, we see competitors, um, ourselves, we have products that can max out the limitations of the tractor today. Um, and this is now the most powerful tractor available, and sometimes it, it still doesn't have enough. So yeah, it's something that's, it will never end. Any other, any other questions? 
If not, thanks everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day and uh, the rest of the show. Uh, thanks everyone and uh, Scott will be, uh, I hope that he will be around if you have more questions for Scott. It's a very nice and very informative information. So I at least learn a lot. I hope everybody has some for a take home for you from seeding to harvesting how this new innovation and technology is working, especially in particular, as Scott mentioned, it's a need base and a multidisciplinary team is just working and thinking about that when coming for an, some innovation. So thank you very much, Scott. So I would like to thank uh, Scott for a nice presentation. Also, I would like to announce that in lieu of the speaker's gift, a donation has been made to the Manitoba Farmers Wellness Program in honor of our speakers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you, thank you everyone.